<clears throat> okay. Let's see if there's anybody around and if anything is happening here. Can I go home? If I go live, will this refresh? Is there anybody out there? Is everybody just wondering? Oh, there's somebody there. I've just had a thumbs up. So, that must be something going on. There must be something going on. One person. Let's just refresh this feed here. I'm trying to get this so that I can see what's going on here, guys. So, view channel. Live. One what? Oh. I'm trying to get this so that I can see what's going on here, guys. Oh, I need to turn the volume down. So, you Hey! Oh, we got there, technology, in the end. Hey up, folks! I am on my holidays, and I thought, well, you know, I've, I've got all... I've got a very kind of basic bit of gear... To get, yes, I am on holiday. That's the one. A up, I am on holiday. I'm in lovely Pembrokeshire. But, do you know, I think it's important to keep the class going. Let's just see who rolls up. Let's. So, this isn't going live in the Facebook group, unfortunately. But it will be available for replay. I'm just going to have a tune here because I'm ill prepared. Ill prepared today. That no live tonight. But no. But no, guys. I am here tonight. I am here. And I have... Uh, I've got my iPad here. I'm looking at comments down there. My glasses are mucky. <laughs> yes, I am mad. I am mad doing this on my holidays. Yes, Alex. It's live in the fraternity. Um, oh, I, I've not put any posts out because internet's just been a little bit rubbish. So um, we're doing the best we can. But I can see your, your comments here. Looking forward to the tangents. Indeed. I'm looking forward to the tangents. Hang on, let me just adjust my stand here. Nope, that's as big as it gets. <laughs> that's, as, that's as much as we get there, guys. So, right. For those of you who um, don't um, want to watch all the waffle, um, generally what happens with this, let me just explain something to you. Um, what I do is I clean up the videos and then I take all the waffly bits out. If you want to watch that replay, then that will be something that you will get some golden nuggets out of. But if you don't like the waffle, then this isn't the video for you. Don't get me wrong. The lesson is a good, good lesson that you would get. You would get a lot from. But <clears throat> if you don't like live videos, then this probably isn't the, the one for you. So I'm just putting that out there at the beginning here. I should say this. This is a lovely little. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Got a frog in my throat. My throat. There's a lovely little travel guitar I picked up. Uh, this was at my school, my music school, for six years on the wall. Nobody wanted it. And I got um, my mate Ben, my my one of my protege students, who's amazing uh, at sorting out guitars, to do me a setup on it, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, but sadly, it's by a company uh, called Acoustica that are no longer around anymore. So, yeah, it's one of those. It's a nice little one, but it is tuned half a step lower. So today, this is in E flat. Which brings me to the whole point and the crux of today's lesson. Today's lesson is all about using the capo because somebody mentioned in the Facebook group about how to use a capo. I haven't really done a lesson on capo and I should say it's capo, not capo. Yeah, capo, 
Capo de Capo. Let's say it correctly, guys. It's Capo, not Capo. I've got a t-shirt. I'll put a link for that in the description. Yes. Um, so, this is, this is my preferred Capo these days. You can get the springy ones um, that do the business, but this is a Shub um, general job it. If you want, if you're interested, I'll put a link down there. But because I am, um, because I am in E flat here in my tuning, if I want to sound like I'm in tune with everybody else who's in standard tuning, then here's the first sort of use case really for a capo. Um, now this one you have to, there's a little wheel on the back, you have to press on it and turn it. And then what that does is that gets your capo there. Now when you place a capo, yeah, what happens is we have to put the capo on as if it was a finger. Yeah, so it's, it works exactly the same way. Notice where I've put the capo on the fret. Not in the middle of the fret, right up next to the fret wire. Because essentially, if you think about it, what a fair, uh, what the um, fret wire actually does is it acts as a head nut. Yeah, so if you look at this, how the physics of these strings coming over this head nut are there, you'll see that that's where the strings start. We think about that as the zero fret is the head note. So what we essentially do with the capo is we are creating a new head note. And we use the fret wire to make that new head note. So this means we can move this and we can transpose. Yes, trans means move, pose means position. So we can move this up and down. Yes, I'm, I'm in, uh, I'm not in Perthshire. Oh, I'm not in Perthshire. <laughs> Today I'm in Pembrokeshire, so I'm in South Wales. So, so we can see here we have um, that capo on there. Let me just shift this down so you can see the guitar a little bit better. Hope my stand doesn't fall. It cut my head off, but that's okay. We're all right. We don't see need to see my mug in shot. So hopefully, that's it, guys. Oop. There we go. Right. Okay. So you can see here. This is now in standard tuning. So this would sound wonderful to how you are playing. Now, the reason this comes from the book, this comes from the book, is this is the elusive, for some time this is, was an elusive lesson, number 24, because I felt it was such a big, uh, big, 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 big lesson. Um, uh, if... I've got something coming up with this one because I think this is re a really, 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 really important lesson that people, yeah, that people need to understand, yeah, and it's all about how to use a capo. Now, I'll explain a few different things to you with this. Um, the ten chords that we have here, the strings. E flat, does that mean that all the strings are down? They're down a half step. So they are down a half step. So here we can see these 10 chords here, guys. Now you can see I've favoured these caged chords, C, A, G, E, D chords there. And then what we've got is the, der the derived chords from those, the, the minor derivations that we need, derivations. So we need the A minor, the E minor, and the D minor. Notice there is no... B chord, yeah, there's nothing, there's no B B chord on, there's no, um, uh, no, there's no hard chords in here. These chords here, I've done them all to be non-bar chords. So you don't need to play bar chords if you are using a capo. It's the ultimate cheat system. It really, really is. So what we can do is we can, we can use the capo to change keys. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's have a look in the comments. Uh, so this, yeah, just so you, so you know, for you guys who've got the book, that's the link there at the bottom. It's page 30 and it is lesson 24. Yeah, so this, that's a, a, up there. But I will, I am saying, what I am saying is, is that this is bigger than you think. And so much so, I'm about three quarters of the way from putting a, a little micro course together 
that I'm going to give away to you guys for free. If you want that, go over to my website, rickysguitar.com. I haven't got all my fancy graphics here, but you'll find it if you're here in, in YouTube. Go over to my website and make sure you sign up to my newsletter. When that goes live, then that will be... You know, you'll get an email about that when that goes in there. That, but that's just stuff. I, I just think it's just something nice to share with people. And also, <laughs> could be squinting like this. Uh, it's like trying to hide in the, in the wardrobe or something. Um, <laughs> and also, what it will be doing, what will happen is, is if you're a member of the Fretboard Fraternity, this course this little micro course that i put together will appear in the learning tab yeah so i'm a little bit slow to uh, to approve people coming in at the minute because obviously i'm in pembrokeshire i'm walking on the beach and eating ice cream and stuff like that so i hope you forgive me that so uh yeah make sure you do that you yeah, get these it's, richard says what page this is page 30 richard page 30 there okay so we've got a few more folks rolling in now. I think everybody's starting to get the notifications. So just put that out there. There's just a few, just a bit of housekeeping there with that. So like I say, yeah, when we put this capo on, we want to do it like this. And like a, this one, this is the way that this one works. It unclips there and then you tighten it specifically with that there. Now, my favourite places for playing with the capo is the second fret and the fourth fret the second fret is a lovely fret if you're in standard tuning because um oh yes billy joe get some likes get some stuff like that going on um right okay so a little <laughs> i'm feeling the lack of organization a little bit here now today but You'll forgive me, you'll bear with me. Let me move a little bit further back and that hopefully will get us a little bit clearer on this thing. So like I say, what this is, this is a transpositional tool. Now, what you need to understand is the way the capo works, the, there's two keys that we need to think about. We need to think about what I think of it as is the C position keys and then the G position keys. Let me talk to you about the C position keys and I'm gonna play these without the capo, just in an open position here like this. So what we've got is we've got the C position. Now, when I think C position, what I'm gonna think now is I'm gonna think the, key, the chords that are in the key of C major. Now, the thing we have to remember with that is it goes major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. We're not going to bother with the diminished because we're just going to keep it nice and simple here. So we're going to go, chord one is going to be C major. Yes, and so if you've got page 30 open, this is in that bunch of 10 chords. So we've got C major, okay? That's chord one. Next chord up, and if you want to, you'll hear the, the do, re, mi as we go along, so this would be C major, D minor. Now the next chord is gonna be E minor. So listen to this, E minor. The next chord we get is F. I like to play F like this, it's a second inversion. You can put your thumb over the top if you've got a big enough thumb. If you haven't, it's fine. You can play it like this. The chord police will come for you. And so that's not a proper F, you need to play it as a bar chord. But if you struggle with the bar chord, you don't have to struggle with the bar chord like this. Look at this. So there's the F. Okay. Now what we could do is we could be clever. And this is a little trick. This is a tangent. So here we go, the first one. If we've got that as an F, and we know that the root note is there, or it's actually here, it's mirrored on the thin E string, then what we can do is we've got F, move it up a step. G, and then we move up another step. A, move it up a step. B, C, we can use that same shape. So we don't actually have to shift to a G shape, which is the next shape that was gonna go through. So let me just put that this way. So we've got, so we've got, um, so we've got C, D minor, E minor, F, G. What I want you to look at here is the economy of movement. How we move from an F chord to a G chord. Look at the movement in the wrist. 
there. Look at that. See, there's a lot of movement there. That's F to G. Watch this. Hey, this is F to G as well. Look at this. F, G. Look how economical that is. So bear that in mind when you're changing through these chords that you don't always want to be just being a slave to this idea that that's the G chord. It isn't, that's not the only way to play a G. Yeah, so we go F, G. Then what we do is we jump over to A minor. Now, carry my wife. Don't know if she's watching now. If she is, she'll, she'll text me. If she could drop a message in the Facebook group to tell people I am live on YouTube like I should have done, that would be gratefully um, uh, accepted that. Yeah, so here we've got the A minor. And then what we could do is we could have a B diminished. Back to C, okay? So running through that we get Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, T. And that is all seven of the chords that we get in C major. And you'll notice that some of these shapes, yeah, well, if we think about it, the A minor, out of those 10 chords in that in the book there, that A minor is derived from an A major shape. You could play it like that, but I play it like this because I think it's just a little bit easier. Yeah, so the D minor. This ties in with that little quick lesson I did the other week where I go five, R, three. There's the minor there. Minor third. So we go. So that's a D shape. We're only using cage chords here, guys. Okay, All right. So that's the key. We'll, we'll just imagine the guitar is in standard tuning. Yes, because it's actually at the minute it isn't. This would be only 14 minutes late. Oh. So here, this is me now in standard tuning. And if you'll notice, look at the shapes. This is a C shape. Yeah, oh, that just a little bit squeaky there because I wasn't close enough to the head, no, uh, to the fret wire. There's the C shape. That's the D minor shape. E minor shape. F shape. G shape. A minor shape, B diminished shape, and then back to C. Hey up, Willie. So, good game last night, actually, England v Belgium. Um, so, we've got this going on here. So, we've got to think about this from this position. The critical thing comes from chord one. Yes, so I've said that this this is C major. We've got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, uh, diminished. Yes, so chord one is the key. That's the tonic, the, the tone of the key that we are in. So this is what's going on here. So this would be, imagine this is the head note. This would be in the key of C. But what I can do is I can use this as a transposition tool. Now just imagine, like I say, that we're in the key of C. If this is C under here, here's how you find it as well for the key of C. If we take that C chord, just take those two fingers off and think to yourself, okay, I want to play in the key of D, but I don't want to play the chords in the key of D. Here's why. Look, here's the key of D, right? D, E minor. Here's chord three. Look at this. Ooh. Bar chord. Yes, we get F sharp minor there for chord three. So, okay, yeah, D, E minor, F sharp minor. You hear that? Right? Chord. Uh, now, what we've got to do is we've got to come up with chord four. Yes, which is oh, G. We can play it like that. G. Right? Then we've got chord five. And then we've got chord, uh, chord six. Which is another bar chord. Now we can cheat on the B minor. We can play it like that as it is in the book on page 30. Yeah, but it introduces two bar chords for that song. Let's take this idea again and move it up and see the problems that we're going to encounter with this. So if that's C, this is D. Let's move it up. So imagine we were playing in the key of E here. 
Right, so the key of E, the key of E goes, oop, drop me kapoor, hang on, let me just get this, retrieve this. Like a fish out of water. Yes, you should embrace the bar chords, don't, don't, don't hide from them, no. But, I will say, as a beginner, the important thing, the important thing in the beginning of your guitar journey is to play songs and play things that you recognise um, and other people recognise as well. Because if you play something and somebody goes, oh yeah, that's that song, isn't it? That's, uh, that's uh, um, that Elvis Presley song. Oh, I like that one. That feedback is so rewarding. It's the best thing. That will be the thing that will make you say, Oh, I'm doing all right then. I'm actually achieving something. I'm getting somewhere with my guitar playing because not only it's not just me that 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 <laughs> knows what the song is. I'm playing it. Other people are recognizing it. If other people are recognizing it, I must be playing it right. Yeah. So don't underestimate this idea of dodging bar chords at first. But you know, like my sugar says on the uh, as well. Don't shirk the bar chords. You've got to do that. I have a lot of exercises for doing bar chord, bar chord exercises that, you know, that I think I'll probably do that in a video at some point in the future when I've got more controlled circumstances. Um, so, but like I said, E major, F sharp minor, yes. Then we get G sharp minor, yeah. Then we get A, then we get B, bar chord. So that's, I've already got three bar chords in this already. Does this make sense? Is this the real Ricky? Yes, it is the... Now you're making my doubt me doubt my own existence. Is this all a hologram uh, or what? So, um, so the thing is, this is the theory. Yes, the theory is is interesting, but technique, the technique of holding chords and everything, really must come before you really delve into the theory. The theory becomes bit by bit. You learn as much as you need to know for everything to make sense of why you are doing it. If you don't know why you're doing something, then you don't see the importance. If you don't see the importance, then you won't practice it. And if you don't practice it, then you don't get better. And that's the whole thing that we want to do. We want to get better. So like I say, E major. I, you know, I got to the B, right? Okay. Um, so, um, E major, loads of bar chords. You don't want that. Okay, so everybody's playing in E major. This is where the capot comes in. And this is where the C position uh, chords come in as well. And like I say, this is why page 30, lesson 24, yeah, those 10 chords are the most important because these 10 chords are from the C position chords and the G position chords. I'm going to show you the, the, the difference between those. So we're just exploring this C position thing so far. It's just a damn shame <laughs> I'm in E flat. I'm enjoying playing in E flat. So to play in E major, I need to capo there. And what I'm doing is I'm chasing this C shape up the neck. Look, look at this. Look at this. Right? Okay. So look, this here. Yeah? C, D, E. That's all you need to do. And what I'm doing is I'm tracking my tonic on that third finger. I know when I get there, the chords I'm going to play are the same ones I played for the C before. So if I put this on fret four, yep, then make sure it's right up next to the fret wire. Colin better be like, better be, um, Having a joke. Here's the D minor. A little bit out of tune. Bear with me on that one, guys. Here's the E minor shape. Same shapes. That's a major. Yes, a bit tight that one. I'll play it as a bar chord there. Then we get the G shape. Then we get that A minor shape. So the shapes stay the same. Yeah? All the same shapes. So that little move I did there with that, that uh, F shape here. Right, 
hopefully this makes sense. Now, the thing is, no need to retune or anything. Yes, exactly. There is no need to retune. And the, the, the cool thing about it is, is you can move this to any position. Now, here, here's where it starts to get tricky. This is where it starts to get tricky. Yeah, if I take this capote up here, yeah, there becomes a point where it of diminishing returns because getting the capote on, now I'm having to adjust the capote here. It doesn't want to go on. I don't think it might sound crap this, right? Now I'm up in the dusty, get towards the dusty end. It's still working here actually. Same chords, yes, yeah? C shape, D minor shape, E minor shape, F shape, it's a bit tighter, is that hard to play? G, A minor, okay? So these, this really kind of pushes it to the limit. And for me, the way I see it is the seventh fret is kind of where it becomes a bit more useless. If I take it there, yeah? That's what I think. That's the one that kind of defined that for me, that position there. Now this is great for um, playing along with other people. Now you wanna know what key you're in, then all you need to do is look at chord one. Yeah, the C shape. Look at the third finger, work out what that note is there. Well this one here is, well imagine this is in standard tuning, this would be a G. So this would be the key of G. Now, this is why I think it's important. Two guitar players playing exactly the same chords in exactly the same position can sound really odd because the differential between them be in their tuning can give you this kind of modulation chorusy effect. It can sound a, good, a bit it can sound good as a kind of a almost like a 12 stringy sort of effect but personally i think you've got all this guitar neck to go at if you know how to transpose and say you know how to play it up here if somebody was playing in the g position down here and i was playing up here i think of this as being called one yes called two called three called four called uh five called six so if somebody said that the chord was a six two five one i'd go six which is the a, a minor chord there. Six, two is gonna be this. Two, five would be the um, G, and then go to the C. Yeah, so. Now I can feel this is up right on the cusp of it being useful. Yeah, so we're capoing. The capo is the nut, but we use it to transpose. So when we hit the seventh fret, like I say, I feel that's about the limit. So what do you do then with the other keys? And if we want to think about it, we could think of it, we go like this. If I go up chromatically here from the third fret, I go C, and I think this is the key of D flat. This is the key of D. This is the key of E flat. This is the key of F. This is the key of F. Yes, this is the key of F sharp or G flat, and this is the key of G. So by moving that C shape up, that's what we do. But you'll notice that if we count up there, we go one key, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we'll call it seven, maybe eight keys. There's 12 keys. So some keys are gonna be missing. Some keys are going to be missing. So what we need to be able to do is find those. And this is where and this is why there are 10 chords on here, right? You'll find that C major, the key of C and the key of G are so close. They've got so many chords in common. They've got C in common. They've got E minor in common. Yeah, so, so the, uh, and, and what you need to be able to do is to be able to figure that out. And here, this, it tells you all the chords. So these 10 chords are chords in the key of... Um, well, there's a few more in there actually. These are the chords in the keys of C 
and the key of G. So let's look at the chord, chords in the key of G. Chords in the key of G, guys, I am in E flat. If you're late to the party, I am in E flat tuning. So G now becomes chord one. And whereas before, what we were doing is to track the tonic, yeah, what we used was that third finger on the A string. Now what we're gonna do is, because we're in the key of G, we're gonna use the thick E string to track the tonic. It's exactly the same process, absolutely the same process. But what we have to do is we have to use a different uh, seven shapes, which some of them are the same shapes. Okay, so let's look at this. So here's, here's the G. Yeah, that's chord one in the key of G. This note here, this one here is the tonic of the key of G. That's a G note, yes? This is why you need to know the names of your notes. Yeah, people get, get say, oh, you don't need to know the names of your notes. You should learn intervals. Yes, you should learn intervals. You need to learn intervals, yes. But you also need to learn the names of your notes as well to find tonics for keys and for root notes for chord scales and arpeggios. Yes? So look, here, okay? Um, Colin C actually asked a good question. Are chords of C also the chords, same chords of A minor? Yes, A minor is the relative minor uh, of C major, yes? The two sides of the same coin. Yes, so that's a good good question. Very good question. So here we go. Look, so we've got we've got the G chord, which is chord one. Right? So what comes after G? A. So we're gonna have an A minor. Then we get a B minor. Now bear in mind, we can't escape bar chords. So look, let's play the bar chord version. There is a B minor. Okay, but I can cheat, I can play it like this, and curiously, I did a video on this, how one chord shape, look, you can use this shape to play your minors, yeah, but if I move it up a string, yeah, the whole same shape, we get those major shapes, yeah, look, there's an F, look at the fingers, if I drop them down, I keep the same hand shape, Move that up, there's B minor. So that's a good cheat, but there's the B minor, yeah? So, there is that. Right, okay, it's a little bit awkward as this stool is a bit low. So, there's the B minor. So that's chord three. Next chord is chord C. Which is, this is one of the reasons I think people get lost in what key they're in especially between C and G. And the one that's gonna tell you, that tells me generally, if there's a D major, and it's telling me we're in the key of G, if it's D minor, and maybe there's an F, yeah, there's no F in the key of G. So G, A minor, B minor, cheat shape, C, D chord, that's chord five, E minor, F sharp diminished, we're going to do it as a diminished seventh as well, which leads us back to the key to the tonic there in G. So chord one, yes, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six, chord seven, back to chord one. Now that is super cool because now we have another key. Another reason we need to be able to use a capot, another reason is because we want to be able to um, facilitate the singer. There is, when a singer has, uh, singers have a preferred key that they like to sing in, that their voice, it's their natural vocal range, that's called their tessitura. So if this is the case that you might think, uh, that you can't sing and play guitar. Someone mentioned this before, actually. And I think it's a it's a point worth bringing up. If you don't know the tessitura, the key that you prefer singing in, and you sing in a key that isn't um, good for you, that you can't sing in, then what you're going to do is you're going to process that as, I'm rubbish at this. I can't do this. I can't play guitar and sing at the same time because... 
I didn't know if you... His, the thing is, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, so if you knew this, if you knew what was your preferred key that you could do, that you could sing in, then you use the capo, transpose the songs that you want to learn to that key, and then, lo and behold, you'll find it infinitely easier. I've, I've had this happen so many times with my students over the last 30-odd years that they sit down and they go, I can't play this. So this is an aside, this is a tangent, this is telling you that, that, that you need to know where your vocal range sits if you have any aspiration to sing and play at the same time. Yeah, The capo will help you to get there. But you need to be able to play all 12 keys. Yes, and the capo will do that. The C form, like I was showing you, how do you find it? It's a brilliant question. How do you find it? How do you find your key? Well, the tessitura usually lives around your regular speaking voice. If you imagine how um, how easy it is for you to just talk and listen to the musicality of the, of the sound of the notes, if you can match certain notes on the piano, piano is probably the best, or guitar, you could do it on the guitar. <laughs> Um, I remember reading a study, and it said that, uh, and this is one of the things that you've, that we, we that helps male and females <laughs> communicate better because we need to understand this. This is why men are a bit more grunty, yeah. And I think it was, uh, I think I read it in "Men Are from Mars, Women Are from Venus," and it was basically that uh, in history, men were the ones that used to go out with the bows and arrows and hunt for prey. So they had to sit in hedges behind rocks, waiting in silence. So we really didn't develop that vocal range thing. Yeah, so, and, and apparently only one in 10 men can sing. Yes, to a degree of, of competence. Whereas what happened is the, the women would be back at the, the, um, the hut, the family cave, if you will, and, and they were talking and monitoring and registering and looking out for saber-toothed tigers and imminent threats and making sure and communicating. So as a net result, women have a, a naturally more melodic vocal capacity, whereas men have less. And this is just one of those things that's happened because of the way we've evolved. Yes, and, and I think this is a fascinating idea. Uh, which is why, you know, if, if there's a choir in your area, yeah, you'll find that it's full of ladies and there's hardly any men. <laughs> yeah, that's it, right? And this, this is the thing. Uh, and the men that are there just generally end up being bass vocals. But anyhow, this is, that's a side. The thing is, you've got to tune into where your voice sits and then find out what range you can go, uh, you know, how far you can go up, if you've got an octave range, if you've got an octave and a half range. So that's what you've got to do. You've just got to work it all out. And I think, you know, there's also, you know, you've got to develop your falsetto and all those sort of things. But generally the idea that I think with, with, with singing is that it's if there's a sound that you make and it's high note and it feels, but it feels weak, it can be developed. It can be developed. But that's an aside. Yeah, it's a caveman playing guitar. <laughs> yes, indeed. So look, um, so, yes, plenty of choirs around here. So what I'm saying is here, we've got this G chord. Let's get back onto this one here, guys, because we're 39 minutes in. Who needs a tinder? Go to circular breathing. Yeah, that that your know, circular breathing. We don't really need any circular circular breathe uh, breathing for for singing. So here's the thing. Okay, so just like we did with the C chords, guys. So yeah, we go G. So now we can do the same thing here. If the song was written in the key of um, if it was written in the key of A, for instance, then what you do is you take this and you go, right, well, there's it. I'm in G now, I'm following this, I'm tracking my tonic here, and I move it up a whole step. Then that is where I have to put my capo on. But remember, I have to put my capo where it's going to put that chord at that position. So you'll see, let me put this here. 
like I say, bearing in mind, this is in E flat. Tessitura, yes, that's the word. Yeah, so we've got this here. There is an A chord. So if I was in standard tuning, which I'm not, this is actually an A flat. Yeah, so this is the worst one I should to, to do this on. So we've got G, A minor shape, B minor shape, C shape, D shape, E minor shape. We have got the same shapes, but we are changing the key and we're tracking the tonic by using the first chord, which is this G shape. Now, you can see that what that's done is that taken, that's taken me up there, okay? So, because this is in E flat, if I put this on the first fret and I tune this now, then I know that this is gonna be in tune with your guitar that's in open 440 uh, standard tuning, yeah? So I've got this, this one here. Also, what ends up happening is, uh, I can take this up here, let me put it up here, and then this is going to put it in the key of B. Yeah, you think to yourself, oh, key of B. Let me just show you key. Let's look at the key of B, ordinarily. If we're thinking about it down here, we might go chord one, B, okay. Chord two, chord three. Hang on, I'm already just playing bar chords. So you don't always have to have the bar chords. And another reason, and you'll love all these different reasons to it why this is so important. If I had the key of B here, like this, yeah, then what happens is the rules around the C position and the G position fall into play here. When I play a G position here, all the open strings are fair, fair game. If I play any of these chords, yeah, if I drop a string, it's going to sound okay because it's part of the scale. Yeah, so, so we've got the G, A minor. You see, so I can take any of these fingers, fingers off, and all the notes that are under the capot are okay because the key facilitates that. If this was in the key of B and I was playing that down here, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't be possible. Yeah, because all those notes need uh, fretting, okay? So just jumping back actually to the key of C. If we look at the key of C, we go. Those are all the notes that I would have in that position for the key of C, so. C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor. Yeah? And I, I know that I can take this finger off and I'm not gonna sound awful. Because that's partly one of the things you think to yourself, I'm going to take a finger off, I'm going to try something, and it gonna, it's going to sound absolutely diabolical. Which is why I love playing this F shape like this. Instead of a bar chord, look. If I take that middle finger off, it goes to minor. But if I do it like this shape, yeah, it's a bit hard to play um, uh, in this on this guitar. If I play that, I get an F sus too. Yes, it is, Colin, yes. Yeah. And this facilitates the change to a C chord. There's C, there's F. make sense guys so hopefully that also banishes some fear because that's what we've got to do we've got to banish fear because fear is the mind killer yes doubt is the mind killer yeah um you can do it as well in the key of d yeah we can do it in the key of d yeah
yeah. So we could do it in the key of D as well, if we don't want to get any of these notes that are going to be boo-boos. As we add more uh, 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 accidental sharps and flats to the keys, then it does get a little bit trickier. I will say that, um, you know, key of, e uh, key of F uh, slash D minor, we've got a B flat in there, we have a B string. We can't get a B flat because the, the capo doesn't facilitate that. Saying that, you can get prepared capos that do things and some people, and I've done it myself, is where you buy some cheap capos and you cut bits out and so that strings can ring. But the real beauty of the capo is, for me, especially on acoustic guitar, is it means you, that you re, re, get to retain the sound of uh, open strings, yeah? So that... That's an E chord, sounding an E chord, but it's played a C shape. If I played that as a as a bar chord, there's not as much resonance. And the whole thing about an acoustic guitar is resonance. The body of the guitar is is how we are achieving the sound. So really, we want to max that out, which is why these these um, uh, keys that have all the notes available there. If I'm in that G, with a G key, the G position chords, sorry, yeah, playing this A key of A, hang on, a little bit out there. Might need a little bit of adjusting. Yeah, there, so. Yeah, it's a, because I can do things like this. This is a lovely little change. If I play this, let me just show you this. This is a C. This is a tangent, by the way. Yeah, this is a tangent. There's a C. Now what I can do is I can get rid of that root note and I can put a, a fifth on instead. So this becomes a second inversion. So the chord that I get there is a C slash G. But I'm keeping the A string quiet. I'm muting that, thin a uh, that thick A string there. And it makes the chord sound rich, yeah? But the cool thing is, and this is a cheat G. Adopt it later, you can adopt it later on, yeah? But if you take these two fingers off, and don't play the thin E string, yeah? That's a G. So look at that. This is a quick change between C and G. So there's G, there's C, G, C. Now I can play this uh, in a 12 bar bluesy sort of style. Or if I want to go C, G, C, G, C, G. Look at the practicality of this. Look, look, look at this for a, 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 this idea here about economy of movement and efficiency. C, G, C, G. <laughs> Playing fast changes like that. That's impossible. Yeah? Yeah, it's hard. It's difficult. Yeah, it's not something you're going to want to do. It's not something you're going to relish as a guitar player. But look at this. So if I play this first, uh, second version C and I go... Do it all day long. So we've got to modify how we're attacking the chords to do this, and this is the beauty of this capo because it allows me to do that. This is an A chord. Yes. Sorry, this isn't an A chord. This is a D chord. This is actually a D chord. Yeah. And this is going to be an A chord if we're thinking about it from the perspective of this being at the fifth fret because this is the tonic of the G. So let me move this up here and show you how we get to that restrictive pop point again. Okay so we're in the key of C now <laughs> which is bizarre so you think to yourself hang on the key of C I would use these chords here. But if one guitarist is playing this up here, yeah, they're going to be playing the G position chords, which is G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor. 
would have the F sharp diminished back to the G. Okay, so those would be the chords that we would play there for chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six, yeah, chord seven, chord one. All right, but if I took this off here, then I would get, but played the C position chords, I would get chords in a lower timbre. I would have chords in a lower timbre. And then if you have chords in this lower timbre here, that's one voice of the guitar. And then if we had another guitar playing the chords up here, that would be another voice. And those two voices, when they layer on top of each other, they sound sweet. They sound so good. Yes, instead of two guitarists playing in exactly the same position, you now have two guitarists who are playing in different positions, but they're in perfect harmony with each other. But the top, the the texture of the chord, the overall sound that you that you um, create is going to be so much nicer. And if you write songs, then you definitely need to use this trick. You definitely need to employ this, playing the same chords. They're they're, they're not that difficult. If you and you know you don't have to be. You know, let's be real about this. Yeah, you don't have to be, you know, a, holding a degree in music to be able to write a song. All you need is a handful of chords. What is it? What they say is, all you need is three chords and the truth. And the thing is, as long as it's your truth, and you are getting the song out, you're getting out what's in here, yeah, through the guitar. Then that's all that matters. Yeah. It can be really, really cathartic, can be really, really useful for you as a kind of a life tool. Just, you know, I'm getting a little bit kind of philosophical here, but as as um, a coping strategy, people write songs to help them cope, even if nobody else ever hears them. And I heartily recommend that you do this, you write them down. It doesn't matter if anybody else hears them. And I would really recommend doing this, yes? So, yeah, it's yeah three chords and the truth, but it's important that the truth is your truth if you are writing songs, because that way it, everything means more. And if you know it when somebody's singing and they don't believe the lyrics that they're singing, and it doesn't, it's not congruent, you know. If you're singing something and it doesn't matter if you, if it doesn't matter if you're still trying to find your tessitura, yeah, doesn't matter as long as you're expressing yourself and you're using this yeah this is my coping device this, i can't I, i'm going off on a tangent here yeah but i can't tell you how many times in my life that this thing has provided comfort for me i'm ever so grateful to have found this this thing the guitar because it provides so much uh uh comfort and probably that's the reason why I started it in the first place, you know, because I thought it's a lovely distraction. And when I play it, I was like, and I get into it and I drop into the zone, I disappear. It becomes this meditative process and I, I'm gone. I'm not here. And all my worries, so therefore I'm not connected to all my worries. It doesn't mean I'm dodging them. I'm, and I'm not facing up to my responsibilities. It's just sometimes you need to find that space that headspace to just take a little break and think to yourself, okay, you come back, you go, right, okay, I can handle everything now. I can do that. And this is what I'm saying. This is why I love this thing. Mm. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Yes, and I hope you love it too. Because the thing is, the more you, the, the better the relationship you have with your guitar, um, the more you'll get out of it and the, it really becomes one of those things and I, I consider this is the master I'm always the student yes I'm always the student so tangent okay so to recap recap with this because we're just about coming up to an hour guys yes what we do yes yeah someone said it's helping me I think playing an instrument is better than pharmaceutical drugs because the thing is it's like it's 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 complete and, it, and if you get if you get hooked on it and you become obsessed with it it's not a bad thing it's not it really isn't okay so <laughs> this <laughs> it really isn't so 
let's look at this from the perspective of how I think of key uh, using the E string, of what keys we need to be able to think in. We need the key of E, we need the key of F, we need the key of G flat. Now I can think of this as F sharp, this is G, this one here, I would not think of the key of G sharp. I would think of this as the key of A flat. Yeah, so A flat, G sharp, they're the same note uh, there. There's the A. That's going to be a B flat, not an A sharp. There is no key of A sharp. I mean, theoretically, you can get there where using double sharps and stuff like that, but it's nonsense. Key of B. Okay, key of B there, key of C. Key of this one here, this is going to be D flat. There's no key of C sharp. There is a key of C sharp, but it's got seven sharps. Do you want to get into that territory? No, you don't. So let's not. Okay, so we go here. This is the key of D. Whoop! And I uh, didn't see that going. <laughs> oh, the camera decided it was going for a wander. Let's look at this. Let's ho hopefully that will stay up. Hopefully, let me push this back here. <laughs> Fun and games in the creator space. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, you can't beat the, the, the perils of going live. Yeah, you thought you were falling off the chair. Right, okay. So <laughs> it'll be all right on the night. So we've got the key of D, key of E flat, and then double dots, we're back at the key of E, okay? So we've got all that going on there. So we've got 12 keys, and we need to be able to get all 12 keys. So this is where the capo comes in, right? So we can look at this, key of C, key of G. Those are our chord shapes that we're gonna take up the neck. Put the capo on the first fret. So this is kind of a summary. This is going to be the key of D flat, and this is going to be the key of A flat. Move it up another half step, okay? This is going to be C shape, obviously, C position chords here. This is going to be the key of D, this is going to be the key of A. So already we've got six keys that we've tackled already. Okay, right, so up to the third fret. Now we've got the key of E flat and the key of B flat. Okay, right, using the C shape and the G shape um, accordingly. Take it up to the fourth fret. Process of elimination. We've got the key of E, key of B. Okay, where are we at? Where are we at? How many did we get up to there? We, we're getting up to a few of them. We take it up to the fifth fret, doesn't matter. So we take it up to the fifth fret. Yeah, here we've got the C, Position chords on the A string, finding the tonic on the A string there, right? Okay, okay, so this is the key of F. Okay, if I move it here, this is the key of C. Okay, so already we've we've done so we've done one, two, three, four, five, six keys. G shape, one, two, three, four, five, six keys. So that's 12 keys. We've got all those keys got all those keys. We're going to have to get a few more out of there if you wanted to, because we can take it up to the seventh fret, yeah, then, let me put that cap on there, then we can do it again, or another position, but it gets a bit tight up there, and it's like, I, f I find that a little bit tricky. You've not got stumpy sausages, yeah, um, it's like the, the thickness of the neck tends to get wider as you go up. And this is a chunky boy, is this guitar already. So. Yeah, so I played there. I was playing in the key of uh, the key of G. Now I could take that down there, all the way back down there again. And um, that would be here. Yeah, the tuning has well and truly, tru truly gone on that one. Yes, Alex said something interesting as well there. Um, the way I think of the ukulele, the ukulele is 
like, yeah, the, if you take the ukulele, the ukulele, and what we do is if we take the E and the A string, if we got rid of the thick E and the A string, and then what we did is we took the D string and we, we changed the thickness. We, we don't have a, a wound string, we had an unwound string, same as the thin E string, we put that over and still tuned it to the D, yeah, then to the D, uh, to, to the, yeah, to D, then um, what would happen is that would be ukulele. So if you can play guitar chords, the guitar, the chords you play on guitar are exactly the same on ukulele. Yeah, it's just that high G on the ukulele where it goes G, C, E, A, yeah, G, C, E, A. That, that one, yeah, that's the thing that throws you, that high note means you can't equate it with ukulele and that's the really interesting thing which is why ukulele is available as a great little kind of put it in your holiday bag and practice your chords with a ukulele get a cheap ukulele and then you, you, you still practice your chords it's not exactly the same but it will suffice it will get you by so guys that's um that's today's lesson i think we just about hit the limit on that one so we've got um, 10 chords. These are the 10 chords. I call them, it's cheesy, the 10 chord mandments. Yeah, don't boo. No booing. Yes. <laughs> so this is in the book. Um, and like I say, if, you, um, if you're interested, what I will be doing is uh, I'm putting this, these 10 chords together. Mm. A little course on how to put the chords on step by step. Yeah, how to correctly put your fingers on in an order and a process and the mindset and everything else. I'll be, I'll be putting that out. Like I say, it's, I've got about three three or four more videos to shoot for that. Um, all the, the chord videos are all shot. So it's about three quarters of the way there. If you're interested in that, go to my website, rickysguitar.com. Um, and uh, make sure you signed up to the newsletter. If you are part of the Fretboard Fraternity, fretboardfraternity.com, yeah, if you register there or if you've bought the book or anything else uh, um, online, then use the same email and password for that to get into the Fretboard Fraternity. Once the, the 10 Chords mini course is done, it'll be in the learning tab for you to have. Yeah, just so, just to help you along the way. But hopefully, you know, you'll see the method behind the madness with this. So that if you've got these 10 chords down, then you can start to apply them to using a capot. Yeah, and then that means that you can play in any key. If you can play in any key, there are, that means that there are songs that you can access. Because this is the thing, the barrier of, barrier of entry is gone because you think to yourself, I can't play in that key because it's got bar chords. Well, you don't need to worry about bar chords because you can use your capot as the ultimate cheat, if you will. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Um, so, marrying a bit of that theory in there. Yes, so... Where can you send me an original song? Let's do some questions. Let's have a look. I've got my iPad down here as well. So, um, so let's look. Four years will be playing on Office 14, just ordered my book last week. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, make sure you like this video. Give it some likes, give it some love and all that business. Uh, and if you aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe because that's super useful, helps the channel along. Uh, in, in the early quarter one, if you don't know this, a lot of YouTubers, they're, they're, they're paddling like hell uh, to getting content out because quarter, uh, quarter one is usually a little bit harder. So if you hit that, that like and you subscribe and all that good stuff, then it helps us to get out there. Um, how can I play C chord in another shape? Um, it depends on what your... Um, what you're um, uh, looking at there. I'd have to see uh, a different way. Uh, uh, see, you'd have to know exactly what you're trying to access there with, with that one, how to play that, Lorraine. Um, Al, Al, mate, um, send, me a, send me a message, and what I'll do is I'll have a look on the Fretboard Fraternity. You might have two profiles, because uh, that seems to be the most common pro uh, problem, and uh, we need the one that you've, if you've got the ebook 
then uh, then that's the one that you want because all the learning um, section stuff is uh, is connected to if you've bought the ebook. Yeah, so if you've bought the ebook, then that's the email and password that you want. You can reset your password. Um, so we can, you know, we, we'll sort it out. Don't worry about that. Um, like I say, it's just been a little bit trickier. Uh, I uploaded and tagged you. Hopefully you approve. Okay, that's cool, man. Um, so uh, let's have a look. We are just at a quarter past eight here in the UK. The C-shaped cage, cage cut, cut the, the C-shaped cage shape. That's that. That's it there. <laughs> you could do this. Yeah, you could use that. You could use the. You could use these here. Yeah, it. Th there's lots of different ways. You don't have to play it as a C shape, but the thing is, if you want to, you need to be able to play the C shape. Lorraine, it, it's one of those things. You need to just get to grips with it. The thing is, I did a video on my channel on how to play the C shape, the C chord, um, and there's a few different workarounds in there, and that sounds like the video for you. Chances are, if you're asking the, a question, it's going to be in, it's going to be on my channel. Yeah, so have a search on my channel, have a look, and then you'll probably find it. Um, Anthony says, can I join the fretboard frat if you've bought the spiral bound? Yeah, of course you can. It's a free community. It's a free online community that I've set up, fretboardfraternity.com. Uh, and and the whole idea is, is there's no ads, there's no uh, a big tech tracking or anything else like that, because I know a lot of you guys out there, you don't dig um, uh, big tech tracking you and following you and manipulating your shopping uh, suggestions and all that sort of stuff so look the the, fr the fretboard fraternity is is there and like i said before this is a space for you guys to get to know each other as well i'm going to be adding more stuff in there the, the it's getting developed more and more over time and i, I think there is soon there's going to be um there is going to be a calendar integrated in in there and actually i think i'd like to move some of these class some of this online live class stuff over there as well just so that um i can keep up with the comments keep up with everything else because sometimes it doesn't surface um and and i get tagged in stuff and i don't see it because there's a lot of comments so that's the thing um you got stuck in the login page Anik. look i think that th we'll have to look uh, you have to register and i have to approve people um kerry's doing it as well me and kerry will be approving um and and i'm checking in the morning and um last thing at night hope you add a merch area to that site yes i will be adding a merch area i've got some new t-shirts that are uh, that are coming coming up soon as well um back it uh first time enjoyed lesson my mental health and you said about the comfort of playing guitar really hit with me thank you no absolutely absolutely the guitar is your friend yes it is your friend and that's the way to look at it um slightly off topic good lesson today thank thank you carter um so okay if you have any songs and you want to uh, and if you want to um I, I think probably it might be instagram might be the best better place for hashtag discovery if you put hashtag ricky's guitar yeah i will find you if you've got anything there and you uh, uh, then then I, I can check it out and and then maybe even make it part of one of these live classes so that that sound good that sounds good to me right okay right guys i'm gonna go and spend some time with the family now because we are on holiday and uh, they're 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 sat in a window just admiring the sea listening to waves crashing Whereas I, I'm not. So there we go. <laughs> so um, Pembroke, Nostar. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. I think that I think that's um, good night. Yes, it is good night. Yeah, that's the one there. True armor. True S armor. Ricky's guitar. That's the one. There you go. Right, guys. I'm going to say good night and bid you fond farewell. Back to normal upload soon. And I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you in a video soon. Okay, take care. Bye.